Okay, this video, um, just going to focus on finishing off the motor controller. Uh, so as I said in the last uh, video, I also want to get back feedback from the robot base about how much it's actually moved after I've given it instructions to to move through the serial port. Uh, so in this one, we'll have a look at the changes I make to the microcontroller code to gather the information and send it back through the serial port. And then in the base motor controller, node, ROS2 node, uh, to actually read that serial information and then publish it as a pose command, which is the ROS2 uh, standard way of showing uh, a robot's position and orientation. Okay, some more updates to make to the base motor controller. So you saw in the last video where I could send, receive twist messages to my our base motor, motor controller node and that sent out via the FT232 to the Pi Pico to get it actually to make movements. Uh, the other thing I want to do is to uh, send back from the base motor controller encoder information, basically t uh, telling this. Uh, how far the the base has moved and then uh, in the base motor controller received that uh, that input from the serial interface and uh, publish pose messages so let's have a look at how to do that so first in the actual microcontroller code that runs on the Pi Pico uh, to send back information about uh, how far the base has moved I added it to the the stop uh, routine here so this is what happens after a movement stops uh, and what it does is uh, first checks whether there was some movement so either a run or a turn had occurred based on the motor mode uh, if either of those had uh, occurred then it works out what the total movement is by rounding the the left and the right uh, encoders total distance moved so that applies for both uh, turns and uh, runs works out the direction of the movement by the the speed that the run or the turn was done at so it works out whether it's a positive or negative movement and then it creates a movement string so this is what's going to get uh, sent back through serial to the base motor controller node uh, so basically going to report with the um, motor mode so it's either going to be an R or a T here depending on whether it's a run or a turn and then it's going to do a formatted uh, number that represents this total movement so it'll have the plus or the minus sign in front of it and then it'll be a padded uh, actually five digits uh, uh, string here then it does a self UART write so just a normal uh, write on the UART uh, of what that uh, value is and that gets received uh, by the base motor controller node for processing so let's have a look at that here's the code for the base motor controller node so I've updated it with uh, being able to receive uh, pose information from the uh, Pi Pico base for, through the serial port converting it into uh, proper pose messages for ROS2 uh, so some of the changes in here and the again the details will be out in github and the link uh, in this uh, video description uh, but added some uh, some variables down here so these ones here keep a running uh, track of where the base is located its x and y coordinates and the current uh, angle uh, angles and radians uh, also added a couple of uh, conversions here and this will get updated when i get the actual robot base and uh, know how many uh, uh, encoder ticks equate to a certain level magnitude of turn or movement forward uh, so ticks to meters ticks to radians constants and I'll probably change these and these which are base specific into parameters that can be loaded when the when the base motor controller actually starts up uh, down in the initialization of this class so before we had a look at the 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 initialization for uh, 
for uh, for the subscription here. So what we've added in here is also uh, initialized the the publisher function to publish the pose messages, and those messages are going to be under the topic called base uh, pose. Otherwise, in this initialization, it starts a, a 10 hertz timer. So this this line here, it's starting a 10 hertz timer, or every tenth of a second, the timer will fire, and it's going to do a call back to this read serial uh, function. So let's go down and have a look at read serial. So this is the bit that's going to be reading the serial information uh, coming in off the FT232 device connected to the Pi Pico. So first thing it does uh, every tenth of a second is to see if there's a character to read uh, from the serial interface. Uh, I've changed the serial interface uh, to be non-blocking, so uh, even though it tries to read one character, if there's no character there, it just drops through this code. If it does find a character, uh, then uh, by default, uh, depend if it's not one of these two types of characters, then it's going to add that character to this base movement info string that it builds uh, globally. So uh, the serial interface, the characters come in one by one, so it's going to be building up this base info string. However, if the character is a backslash n or a new line character, that indicates that the base uh, the complete string has been received from the base uh, so I just uh, log the information in the base movement info so the string that's getting built up just so we know that a string was received then we call this process pose uh, function which we'll have a look at in a second which actually processes this base movement info string and then reinitializes the base movement info string now one more condition I had to put in here is I found after doing a restart on the Pi Pico uh, we seem to get some null characters in the serial uh, buffer uh, so if we see one of those we can't do anything with them uh, we don't really need them so we just drop them we just do a pass here uh, if we see any null characters so let's have a look at this process pose which is after the complete message has been received so first thing we've got to do some uh, validation of the uh, base movement info so it should be seven characters long uh, if it's not then it uh, throws out an error message to the to the ROS2 uh, the first character of the string should be an R or a T and again if it's not it'll throw out an error message and drop out and the other thing is the the characters after that first uh, character should be a uh, an integer v magnitude value so first we check whether it's numeric that that part of the string otherwise we we drop out with a error message uh, if it is numeric then we can convert it to an integer which is the number of ticks that the base has moved so based on the uh, encoders on the base it uh, tells us how many ticks it's moved and then we do a calculation of what the actual change in angle or change in uh, location has been uh, so if it's a uh, base mode of T which means it's turning uh, then it calculates a new pose angle based on the number of ticks it's received doing a conversion of those ticks to radians and then uh, updating the pose angle based on this and remember these are running totals so it'll change the pose angle based on the angle it was uh, last time it got pose information from the base and then it'll publish the pose and we'll have a look at that the other thing it'll do is if it's not a turn it must be a run uh, information about how far the base has run which means it's uh, changed uh, the X and Y location in the, in the overall grid uh, so in this case it has to do a calculation of uh, how much X and how much Y distance it's moved uh, based on the current angle of the, of the base so this is what this calculation is doing and updates the X and Y grid locations uh, based on that and then I'll we'll publish the pose with that information. So let's look at publish pose. So first thing we do is just uh, print out the current pose uh, information which is in uh, uh, meters for pose X, pose Y and radians for pose angle. Uh, 
and we need to build up a, a pose message uh, to send to ROS2 because that's what it uses for positional information. So uh, X and Y can just go into the, the pose position structure as X and Y. Uh, that doesn't need conversion. Uh, but for the angle or the orientation of the the base, we need to use uh, quaternions, uh, which is kind of a complicated thing. I had to read up on what those were. Uh, but uh, it's made up of four four uh, variables to make a quaternion, and I'm uh, put together this this Euler to quaternion conversion. So Euler is the 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 your pitch and roll or the 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 angle of each of those things in a three d dimensional space and converts it to this quaternion which is a four uh, variable uh, function which uh, is what ROS2 uses because it's easier to manipulate these and do calculations on quaternions than, than oil of angles. Uh, so we do the conversion and we set up the quaternion uh, and then load the orientation with the information and then publish the pose message and that's what's uh, uh, published out of the the updated base motor controller and we can have a look at a demonstration of this all working okay making progress with uh, planning for the actual motor board too that i'll have running in the robot when i put it together uh, so just using the knowledge again from using the pico so the the breadboard is uh, I need the Pi Pico on here. I've got a FT three two two three two device to be uh, USB to UART, and then I've got the motor controller here uh, that will actually do the pulse width to the motors. So it looks like I can fit them all onto one of these types of breadboards. So this is a a, a, a breadboard like. Uh, uh, PCB, so it runs the traces, connects them all out on these lines, which makes it easy. Uh, the other thought is, I won't solder these directly to the board. I'll have connectors or headers, and uh, be able to plug the each of these components in. So if I blow them up while I'm playing around, uh, it's easy enough to plug it in a, a new one. But that has everything I need on the board. Also got a few spare lines here, so I um, think I'm going to pull out the I2C connectors from the board and put it on these lines here and have some connectors so if I want some I2C uh, devices later on I'm thinking of adding an accelerometer I can add put that on the board as as well and have plenty of spaces to connect them up. Okay, here we see that uh, prototype board wired up uh, now with the wires connecting the the H-bridge motor controller to the Pi Pico also receiving uh, uh, UART information coming in from the UART there in the bottom bottom uh, left. Uh, this is what I'll actually install on the robot when it comes. Uh, I probably still need to clean it up a little bit, but you'll see in the demo where I'm using this board now rather than the more complicated wiring that was on the breadboard. Uh, okay, I'm going to test out the updated motor controller, uh, sending it uh, it uh, twist messages and uh, watching what pose commands are returned. So first I've started up three uh, sessions and first I'll run the base motor controller. We can see out here when the base motor controller first starts it sends a reboot instruction to the the Pi Pico just to uh, reboot it, get it uh, in our initial state and it's listening on the serial port so you can see the serial port connected here. Uh, I'm gonna watch the the base pose topic so that's going to be published from the base motor controller so let's start that so it's now watching that and then I'm gonna publish uh, twist messages to tell the motor to move so the first one here I'm just going to tell it to turn uh, the angular direction uh, with a velocity of 0.3 and we should see the motors start up. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is stop that. 
So I just send it all zeros for linear and angular velocity. So the first thing you see here is uh, the base motor controller. I've got it reporting on things. So it's telling me that the plot angle is three, just over three radians. Uh, so that's the the angle uh, that that rotation has uh, made it move. And we also see the pose command has been uh, displayed here. So the position hasn't changed because it's just rotating. The base is just rotating, but it's got a quintillion uh, uh, telling us the orientation of the, of the device. And uh, we'll have a look at that in a sec. So let me do one more move. Let's try moving it. Uh, find the right one. We'll just move it in a linear direction, 0.5, so that should affect the X and Y position as well. So we see the motors moving in linear, and we'll stop that one as well. So now we see uh, the base controller has told us the X position and the Y position. So where it's moved in the X direction and the Y uh, direction, uh, because it's moving at an angle now, uh, the X has actually gone in a negative direction because it's uh, past 180 degrees and uh, the Y has gone positive and we've got uh, new pose uh, information returned here with the X and the Y positions which maps here and the current orientation because yeah, we didn't change the direction uh, the orientation is still the same so the other thing we can do just to see what that orientation is, is just uh, take those and, and let's apply the rotation. And we see it saying it's 174 degrees is the angle. And uh, to check that, I'm going to go here and take what the current angle is in radians. And two degrees, so we see it matches 174 degrees, matches what the visualization showed as the, the angle around the z, z axis. So things are looking good for moving the, the motors, telling them to move, and for getting the resulting uh, position or orientation information coming back uh, from the, the base. Uh, I've decided on the robot base I'm going to use as well. So I went with uh, Devastator Tank Mobile Robot Platform. You see here, came from DF Robot. A uh, uh, couple of reasons. I wanted a decent size so I can fit the Raspberry Pi and uh, motor controller or maybe one or two things more on the base. Uh, I think this should be big enough. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. $84 isn't too bad for a, a robot base. I think I can swap out the motors with the ones that I've got already with encoders on them, so they'll help. And uh, there seems to be a lot of community uh, videos and things about this robot base, so that should, uh, if I run into tr trouble or need some ideas about what to do with it, uh, that should help as well. Uh, so that's ordered, that should come soon. So two or three more weeks of this preliminary work, and then I think I'll actually start on getting a moving robot uh, running.